Welcome, everybody. And uh, for those who made the journey back from the NBA uh, Summer League in Vegas, appreciate you coming. Um, I think we've talked in press conferences before uh, that I have a, a love of reading and books. So I brought a book today and I uh, read a quote from it the other night that seemed maybe fitting to start this, this press conference. Um, the book is The Alchemist. For those uh, who've read it, it's a, a tale of a journey of a young boy. And what's interesting about the book is that uh, LeBron James was actually carrying a copy of the book with him throughout the playoffs. And ironically, before uh, I took the job uh, to be general manager of the Lakers, Kobe uh, had given me this book and said, hey, you're going to go on an interesting journey there. Why don't you read it? So uh, maybe it's the convergence of many things, but I'll read the quote uh, to start. But the young boy was able to understand one thing. Making a decision was only the beginning of things. When someone makes a decision, he is really diving into a strong current that will carry him to places he had never dreamed of when he first made the decision. So I, I think our hope is that there were a lot of decisions made this off season. Um, hopefully it'll lead to things for our Lakers fans, uh, for our team, for Jeannie, her family, for Irvin, myself, Luke Walton, and all our players. Um, of things happening that are, are bigger than our dreams could ever imagine. Um, so to, to kind of address the events uh, in a general way, we are incredibly uh, excited to um, have signed 14 players to be a part of our roster for next year. Um, Irvin and I, really going back months, worked with Luke and with Jeannie to design a DNA of what we wanted our roster to be about for next season. And the points of emphasis for us in terms of our roster composition were we wanted high IQ basketball players, we wanted versatility, we wanted depth in our roster, we wanted to be able to play fast, and we wanted players that had a toughness about him. And as we completed our signings yesterday, uh, we look at this roster of 14 players and we're incredibly proud that it represents those things. Um, and today I think it'll be great to uh, get to some questions from you guys to ask about the players we've assembled. Um, um, I'll maybe take you through quickly the uh, the signings that we've done um, and then open it up for questions. So starting at the top, obviously to get the commitment from LeBron James to come to the Lakers for four years um, was really the culmination of, of everything we've been working towards. Uh, as you guys know, when, when Irvin and I were tasked by Jeannie to take this job, uh, we were looking at a salary cap that was – was full, there was no cap room. We were looking at a draft war chest that was somewhat depleted of picks that had been traded out. Um, and Irvin and I, in our past careers, felt like we had both done the impossible, uh, worked on some hard tasks, and we looked at each other and said, hey, we've got to make something work out of this. It's a, it's a challenging beginning, but we have to start playing chess, we have to make the right moves and get to a place where we can create flexibility. Um, and you guys know the narrative there, the moves that we've made. And when LeBron chose to come here, it was of the ultimate validation for the moves we've made and what we've been building since we started. Um, for the greatest player in the world to onboard and to become part of the Lakers, just uh, made Magic and I and Jeannie and Luke so proud of, of the work we've done so far. And I think I said in, in our press release yesterday that the, the work is not done by any stretch of the imagination. We're on a journey. We're on a journey towards bringing the 17th banner to the Los Angeles Lakers, and we know we still have work to do to get there. 
Um, going on to the rest of our roster, uh, as you know, we, we signed Rajon, Rajon Rondo. Um, we wanted to add basketball IQ and playoff toughness to our roster, and he brings that. He's a player that has thrived in playoff moments, and we see this as a playoff roster and a playoff team. So he was essential um, for us to add. Lance Stevenson is a player that just brings an extreme uh, toughness and an edge. If you study championship and playoff teams of the past, uh, you look at Michael Jordan having a player like Dennis Rodman. Um, you look at Kobe's teams with Meta. Having a tough player that brings an, an edge to the game like Lance is a, is, a, is a really nice ingredient that I think with LeBron's leadership will pervade to our young core as well and just give them a, a sense of swagger and toughness. JaVel McGee, um, simply put, he just he changes the geometry of the game. His combination of speed and length and athleticism is, um, is so unique and so hard to find. And um, Magic and I had so many conversations leading up to our signings and conversations with Luke, too, about how for us to play the style we want, we need a rim roller and a rim protector. So if Kyle Kuzma gets the ball on the perimeter and breaks a guy down on the dribble and he's driving, two or three guys can't collapse on him because he's got an angle to throw it up to the rim. So they have to, defenders have to honor that. And so Javel's just gonna open up so many lanes for us. Um, so uh, then we get to, uh, I guess those, the rookie, which we already had a press conference on our rookies with Mo Wagner and Svi and Isaac Banya, who you guys have been seeing in the, uh, in the summer league. Um, We've talked extensively about them, and I'll answer some questions there as well. But uh, I guess just to, to wrap up on the opening, uh, this is a roster that we could not be more thrilled and excited about, and uh, just look forward to getting these guys in this building and starting the work. How have you seen, since the signing of LeBron, how have you seen and felt the culture around the building and around the city change and when do we get to hear from him you know it's interesting I got to go uh, meet LeBron to sign his contract and every moment that you are around someone of his accomplishments um, and with his leadership is impactful and he was it was all business and it was hey you know we're the Lakers now, we don't celebrate signings, we don't celebrate roster additions, we celebrate one thing, and that's NBA championships. That's the goal, that's the only goal. And he made it very clear, he said, I'm gonna be the first guy in the gym every day, I'm gonna be the last guy to leave. And that influence is gonna shape everyone on our roster, because that's who I am, that's what I'm about. And I'm sure all of us saw, you know, yesterday he just got back from a, his, his vacation after the finals. And when I was leaving his house, he jumped into his car and made it clear to his management team, hey, I expect, you know, the weight coach, his trainer to be at the facility he's training at 6 a.m. to get back on the grind. And there he was posting videos of, of the lifting already. And I think, Jim, you know that in our exit meetings with Lonzo, with Kuz, with BI, with, with all the players, Josh, we made it clear about getting their bodies to a pro level, and we've seen the work they've put in. But now when you have the best player in the world joining you on that journey, it just multiplies your passion. It just multiplies your commitment. Um, I think if you look at what Josh Hart is doing in the summer league, for those that have watched the games or been there, Josh made a very unique commitment after the season to get right into the weight room. And he worked on his explosiveness, he worked on his strength, and now he's one of the top three scorers in the summer league and the game looks easy to him. Last night he went down the paint with his left hand and, and dunked on a couple guys. Those were moves he wasn't making last year, but it's a commitment to his body. Um, in terms of the tail end of your question, Jim, when will you hear from LeBron? That'll really be up to him and his management team. Um, in the off season, as you know, that that's those are choices they make.
Hi, Rob. Ted Sobel, Sports USA. A follow-up to Jim's question. Uh, a little history perspective here. You say you don't celebrate signings, but the Lakers have always, and I go way back to even Wilt, it wasn't a celebration necessarily, but at least they said something and they had something to say, hey, I'm here, hello fans. Is there any anything to that at all? To yeah, I think it's a, gr it's a great question. So when I use the word celebrate in terms of the ultimate celebration, like our ultimate celebration is to win an NBA championship. Of course, we're gonna take pleasure in, as I opened with, it's the ultimate validation for a player like LeBron to choose to come here. So that is a celebration, just not an ultimate celebration. But fair question. Hey, Rob. Um, you know how contending teams think through the game at a higher level or even at a maniacal level with certain guys. How realistic is it for the young guys on this team to just raise that to, to the standards that someone like LeBron would expect? You know, it's interesting, Kevin. Uh, we all saw this in the playoffs last year, youth succeeded. We saw it in Utah, we saw it in Boston, and we are absolutely confident that this young core that we have, that we've been so excited about, LeBron made it clear to Irvin and me that that was one of the things he was so excited about. Um, we all know when you're hanging around youth, it's exciting. It kind of, you know, I, I keep thinking it's going to add fuel to his rocket pack, you know, just to be around young, energetic guys that, that play fast and play hard. And there's an innocence to, to being able to shape them and mold them. I think a player at LeBron's career stage, it's going to be really incredible for him to feel like he's giving back to the game and helping shape these young guys. He didn't necessarily have that experience the way the Cleveland team was built. And so we purposely wanted this team to be built very differently than the past ones that he's played with. And um, I really think that the youth is gonna be a mutually beneficial thing to him, just to kind of bring joy back to him, being around the young guys and, and shaping their careers. Um, and then, of course, the influence he's going to have on making those guys better. We've seen that here before with Magic shaping a team, with Kobe shaping a team. Now it's LeBron's turn to have a blank canvas to put his imprint on, on, on the DNA of this team. Yeah, Rob, uh, Darren Horton with uh, KTLA. Um, a lot of people focus on the offense, but it seems like the guys that you acquired also are elite defenders, and I just want to – ask you about the, what factor did that play in, in, in the decision to put this group together? That's a great question. Um, we did not want to go out and just sign specialists like, oh, this guy can just shoot. We wanted tough two-way players, to your point, that could defend with a level of toughness and also make shots. And listen, the road to an NBA championship has to go through the team that won last year. And we all know the guys up north uh, have a special group. But one of the ways to attack what they have is with defensive toughness. I think we saw that in the Houston series with some of the players that Houston had. And, and, and we identified with, if you look at you know, KCP as a guy that is a tough defender and shooter, um, Josh Hart is proven to be a pit bull of a defender and a guy that can make shots. Um, you know, Rondo historically has been a tenacious, tough guy, steals, He's, you know, and, and I think we wanted that mentality, and you're right, we identified it. Uh, Lance Stevenson, he'll agitate you, he'll get under you, he'll cause you to get out of your game, and he can play in the open court and, and score at the rim. So that was a very purposeful decision. It's a part of the equation. I mean, you, you, you have to take if, – if your goal is to win a championship, you've got to look at the way the champs are assembled and how you can um, give yourself the best chance, you know, to take them down. Um, it's not the sole focus or the sole goal, but it's certainly part of the equation. And, 
you know, Irvin and I had a conversation and, you know, LeBron echoed this sentiment that I think to try to play the Warriors in their own game is a trap. No one's going to beat them at their own game. And so that's why we wanted to add these elements of sort of defense and toughness and depth and try to look at areas where, um, where we'll have an advantage. What, what was the decision-making process like with um, what you guys decided with Julius Randle? Um, was there consideration given to giving him a long-term deal, and how much did that depend on what the free agents decided? It's a good question. Um, Julius, unbelievable player for us last year, great young player. Um, we have a philosophy here that when a player's played here and goes on to another team or gets traded, we, we just want them to thrive and succeed, and we wish them you know, the best. Um, we did uh, identify going into this offseason, Tanya, to keep cap flexibility for uh, July of 2019. So you can see that the way our uh, roster is constructed is we didn't do, um, other than LeBron, we didn't do multi-year deals because keeping that flexibility is big for us. Um, again, as I said at the beginning, we don't feel like our work is done in assembling a championship team, but we feel like we've taken another huge step towards that. And Irvin and I made a conscious decision. We're going to have our focus be on the now, the present, this team. Uh, we're not going to think or talk about July 2019 until it gets closer. Uh, but we did make a decision to keep our flexibility. Rob, when you look at this roster and try to figure out what the rotations are going to be, I mean, how positionless is this roster and also uh, with the new guy with the veterans that come in how switchable and versatile do you think they'll be defensively great question you know again we purposely wanted to build a very versatile positionless team and the other thing that we met with luke walton about Irvin and i and we're really excited about is that we feel like we're going to have an open training camp in terms of competing to figure out what is that best five to win and to go deep in the playoffs and to give ourselves a chance to win a championship. I think that's exciting. You know, obviously we have LeBron James is going to be a starter. Uh, no breaking news there. But the other four spots, it's going to be an open uh, training camp decision. And I think that's good for everyone on our team because it's getting them in the mindset of to train hard this summer. I had. Yesterday, I, I sat down with JaVel McGee and Lance Stevenson and right away got into, hey, we are going to play fast. We put a very high priority here on taking care of your body, coming into camp in the best shape you've ever been in, 8% body fat or lower. And when guys know they have a chance to earn minutes or earn a starting spot in camp, it incentivizes them to work hard in the offseason. So, the energy I think Luke's decision there has created is, is good. Um, but yeah, you can imagine lineups on the court where everyone is six seven, six eight, or above. You know, the, a Brandon Ingram is almost a positionless player. LeBron is a positionless player. Kyle Kuzma played two or three positions. You know, I feel like you could go right down the roster, but it's really exciting to think about the length and the speed and um, the way we can play. Hey, Rob, after, uh, okay. after the signing of uh, LeBron, how much of, of the focus was to uh, target players that were still available out there that have won NBA championships or have had deep playoff runs, not just to complement LeBron, but also to teach some of the young kids? Yeah, so Irvin and I had, had free agent boards that kind of played out various chess games, right? So based on, hey, if this superstar free agent comes, what will it look like? If this other superstar free agent comes, what will it look like? We had played out every scenario under the sun. And so when LeBron made his decision, it wasn't like we threw our hands up and said, oh, who should we go sign? We had this all played out. And to your point, when you look at a roster, you have to look at it to me as like a mosaic of tiles. You can't just look at one tile and see the picture. You've got to step back and look at the whole thing. And one of the key ingredients that we had to add when LeBron decided to come was guys that were playoff tested. And if you look at Lance Stevenson, this is a guy that has succeeded in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. Rajon Rondo has won NBA championships. JaVale McGee's coming off of winning twice in a row. 
those guys bring a level of understanding of what it takes to succeed in the playoffs. Um, LeBron and, and Irvin and I had a conversation centered around this, is that the playoffs, it's a game of centimeters. You can win and lose a game or a series based on a decision in a centimeter in a moment of time. And to have a guy like Rajon Rondo, who if you're in a game seven of the playoffs and it's the fourth quarter with a minute left and you got to make the right play or make the decision, he's been there. He's done that. He's proven himself. And so I think the confidence he has in, in those moments, again, will pervade to Alonzo Ball. It'll pervade to a Kuz, to a B.I. We look at him as a leader along with LeBron. So um, you're exactly right. That was something we absolutely wanted to address is playoff experience with those signings. Uh, Rob Ohm, Young Miss like ESPN. Was wondering um, what is the what's the status of Alonzo and his knee? Um, is he going to need surgery? Um, how much has he been able to do? What what exactly happened with his knee? And the other question was, you talked about assembling this team in a different way, maybe than in previous ways that other teams built around LeBron. You have a lot of versatile ball handlers and playmakers. How do you envision that working with so many guys that are good when they have the ball in their hands, but really only one basketball to go around? Yeah. So. Um I think with Lonzo, it's the NBA offseason, so there's HIPAA rules that we have to abide by. I'll just say, no, he's evaluating with his management team a number of things. Um, the good news is all the things they're evaluating as options have him 100% ready for training camp. Um, in terms of getting more information, you'd have to get that from his agent. But we're just excited to know that he's going to be 100% available for training camp based on the information we're getting. Um, in terms of your other question and how we've assembled it, you know, there's been this this kind of surge of, hey, where where are the shooters? You know, where, did you guys? And it's it's to me that's a little bit of a misnomer because, again, we wanted a particular type of shooter. We when we looked at the free agent list, the elite shooters, and you guys can go study it yourself. I can't use names of other players on other teams, but elite shooters. You know, guys that have had max deals as shooters, if you look at their numbers from last year, are in the, like the 38 to 42 percent range, three-point shooting. I mean, I'm talking elite shooters. And, you know, if you look at last year, Josh Hart shot 40 percent. You know, Brandon Ingram shot 40 percent. Uh, KCP had a career year at almost 39 percent, and I feel like is going to have an even better year. LeBron shot 30%. Kyle Kuzma, 37 LeBron shot 37%. Kyle Kuzma, 37%. So just because we didn't sign sort of the poster child shooter that is a specialist and can just make shots, we felt like we assembled a cast of guys that can really shoot the ball but also defend and be versatile. So we feel really confident in that position. Um, or in that skill set. And also, if, if you really study LeBron and the way he plays and Rajon Rondo and the way he plays, these guys are so smart at creating angles and passing that the, the shooting windows for our other players are going to be bigger. And so that's going to increase their percentages. So we feel really confident um, in where we landed there. Rob. Uh, back here. Dylan Hernandez with the LA Times. Um, two questions. Uh, first one: uh, Did LeBron at any point ever express to you, or has he expressed to you, what ultimately you know got him to sign with you guys? Yeah, I don't think it's any one thing. You know, he he's a student of the game, and I think you know sometimes in life actions speak louder than words, and I think he looks at the entire landscape of the NBA. He looks at trades that have been made. He looks at how teams draft players, how they develop them, the style of play. Um, I'm sure he evaluated all those things. You know, he, for us, he was, he was particularly excited about our young core, um, this, the toughness that they played with, um, and the fact that we have flexibility to build something special. And I think, um, but I, you'd have to ask him and, and pick his brain. I don't think it was any one thing, but I, I know he's he's a student of the game like no other. And one more, um, as he gets older and his game kind of adjusts accordingly, how do you kind of envision the team that you put around him uh, changes also? 
You know, I think we're going to take it a year at a time, and we love the roster for this next season all, for all the reasons I've, I've, I've suggested. But, um, again, the work's not done. We're going to be relentless. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to continue to shape and change the roster. We play for one, things in, Lo and one thing in Los Angeles. We pray, play, pray for – play, excuse my language. I'll restate that. We play for NBA titles here. You guys know that. So Magic and I have a mandate from Jeannie to continue to relentlessly work and build this roster until we can accomplish that goal. Hey, Rob. Um, Bill Orem hey, with Bill. The Athletic. Uh, did, how did you react to kind of the, the, the initial um, dominoes of June, June 30th? And were you disappointed in the abstract that um, you were not able to get meetings with, with certain players who were on the market? Gosh, I, I'm... And, and then how did that affect your, your strategy going into July 1st? I'm sorry. Gosh, I think, the Bill, the overwhelming feeling that we have right now here, the way things played out, is gratitude. I, I don't think any of us are counting losses. I mean, we feel incredibly fortunate and grateful. And as I said, we were prepared um, for all the different scenarios that could unfold going into, you know, midnight that night. Um, but to sit here today and to think about this roster, we, it's 100% feelings of accomplishment, gratitude, thankfulness, and not really looking at things that didn't break our way. You know, Rob, you've been talking about this roster that you have put together, and you were talking about, you know, Golden State is the one to watch. It seems like you are pointing in that direction and putting this roster together because a championship team has to have great talent, obviously a great record, but also players that have a little edge to them. And it seems like that's where you're pointing yourself and this team into right now. Yeah, I think, listen, again, we want to be on the pathway of trying to win a title. And – Right now, that has to go through Golden State. But I don't, we don't get caught up in the game of trying to build a team just to beat one other team. Uh, we want to build a team that can beat all 29 other teams. But as I said before, we do take into consideration that one of the ingredients I think that's necessary to get through uh, a team that's, you know, won – back-to-back -back titles is that element of toughness absolutely and that's something that we think will help us in games against them but also in the other 28 teams as well um, well thank you guys so much for coming I think it's going to be an incredibly fun season for everyone here the work you guys put in um, Magic and I really respect the balance you have in terms of allowing us to give information and other times just you know, work, get our jobs done. We want to respect you guys and that because you definitely respect us. And um, I'm just always thankful to have chances to talk and interact with you guys. And uh, so, solo Deo Gloria.